useful ideas of intellect that fuel thought, conversation and action of the minds of our audience. We believe in fostering ideas that are both highly relevant and radically different to enrich the minds of our audiences. Joining us on this platform from across the country and the world, we strive to bring you the most accomplished and inspiring speakers that ignite invaluable knowledge sparks to spread the light of continuous learning and development among educators, teachers, administrators, students and parents. RRIS is delighted to host you on this delightful journey by facilitating this platform as a way of giving back to the community and stakeholders that keep us motivated. And of all things, we expect just one thing from you, to share this light of knowledge with your friends, family, peers and your network. Do invite them to register for these sessions or subscribe to our YouTube channel Ram Ratna International School Official. Thank you for joining in today and we look forward to an inspiring session. Onward we go, forward we march. Best wishes from Ram Ratna International School. Namaste, good afternoon and welcome. Welcome to the 84th Adhar Shila talk at RRIS. I would like to check with our speaker, uh, Dr. Gunmeet Bindra, ma'am. Very good afternoon to you, Jaya. Pranam, ma'am. Good afternoon. What a pleasure to see you. See thank you. you so much for being here on time. First of all, thank you for accepting the request to be an Adhar Shila speaker. I have been wishing for this for a very long time. So it's a dream come true to have you speak to teachers, teachers of my school. And Adhar Shila has provided the platform to connect you to not just the teachers of my school, but other teachers across the country who have been with us since April 2020, when the first seed of Adhar Shila talk was sown. Today, you are the 84th speaker. Honored and privileged, Jaya. Thank you so much. I'm sure there is so much that the uh, participants are going to take away in this next one hour. First of all, what amazes me about Ma'am's talks is the stories, the storytelling. The story is something that we can all relate to as educators and how in similar situations that we all face, a difference in the way of dealing with it can make all the difference in the outcome that you experience. So I'm sure today's session again is going to be full of those interesting stories and how we can look at the same things with a different perspective through a different lens. So today's topic, which is all about something which teachers deal with on a daily basis. It is about discipline. When we think of school, we think of discipline. When we think of discipline, we think of school. I'm sure you all can relate to it. Now, before we get into the topic and ask ma'am to address us, I would like to formally introduce today's speaker to all of you. Dear friends, Dr. Gunmeet Bindra is the director principal of Delhi Public School, Rajpura. She is a former principal of Vellum Boys School, Dehradun. She's an alumnus of Delhi School of Economics and Calcutta University. She's the first woman to have been the head of a boys boarding school in India an accomplished educationist with about 36 years of experience in teaching and school administration. Dr. Bindra has held many coveted positions, including member of the CBSE governing body, CBSE curriculum committee, CBSE affiliation committee, and member of the board of trustees and vice president, Asia Pacific region of the International Boys Schools Coalition. She is also the British Council School Ambassador in India. The numerous awards conferred upon Dr. Bindra include 
the CBSE National Award in 2014, presented by the President of India, the Bharat Vidya Vibhushan Puraskar, presented by the Chief Minister of Uttarakhand, the Pride of Doon Award, the Rajiv Gandhi Education Excellence Award, the Uttarakhand, Uttarakhand Ratna Award, and the National Award for Instructional Leadership in the Principals category of the awards at the NDTV Educomp Education Awards 2016. This is just a few from the huge list of very well-deserved accolades. Right. Having received the number one position in the leadership parameter for four consecutive years in the education world, All India Schools ranking, she received the Extraordinary Leadership Achievement Award in 2019. DPS Rajpura, which is ma'am's current baby, has been ranked number one in Punjab and number six, All India, in the High Potential Emerging Schools category by Education World in 2022. Besides being a swimming champion, Dr. Bindra was the captain of her school and college hockey teams and was also selected for the Indian hockey team. Today, as you can imagine, the kind of uh, experience and expertise she comes with, we are going to learn from her how to look at the daily situation of discipline in the school with a different perspective without taking any further time and without further ado, I would like to invite Dr. Gunmeet Bindra to take over. Thank you, Jaya. Thank you so very much for such a generous introduction. Thank you also <clears throat> for giving me this opportunity to connect with you and your team. I must congratulate you for the fantabulous work that you are doing. And the, the thing is that a lot of people pick up responsibilities to do something noble and novel but consistency is something that i think you can rightfully take huge pride in because it's this consistency that lends a lot of value to any effort however humble it may be at the beginning so lots of congratulations to you. you for taking this on and i am really privileged to be here as the 84th speaker feels very nice Thank you for this introduction about me, uh, uh, in which you mentioned that I was the first woman to head a boys boarding school in India. And let me share with you, my interview started at 10.30 in the morning and wound up at about 11 in the night. And one question that stayed with me was when they asked me, Mrs. Bindra, how will you handle discipline in a boys boarding school? You're a woman. And I told them, I said, I am a woman, but they may be boys, but at the end of it, they are children. They are young men, but for us, they are children. So to all of you, dear teachers and colleagues and peers and whoever guests who are here on this platform today, I must share with you that I'm going to share this afternoon just some of my experiences. I'm no authority on discipline. It's just that I did managed to curtail and bring about a huge sense of self-discipline in my students, which is why I, I feel that I can share some of that with you. So I will probably do a little bit of sharing. Like I said, I'm no authority, but I would also request a lot of participation from all of y'all when we interact this afternoon. So let's begin with discipline, the changing definition. Let me ask you, why, how do you think the definition of discipline has changed? What do you think is the difference? And I'm, I'm beginning my talk with a question that I'm hurling at you. I will give you a little, a little of my example. And I would say that earlier, maybe 30 years ago, if you walked into a school and it was a quiet school, we would say it's a very disciplined school. The school, the, the discipline is very good, very strict teachers. Today, if I walk into a school that's very quiet, I would worry. Because there's a difference between noise and sound. If I don't hear the sound of laughter, if I don't hear the sound of cheer, if I don't hear the sound of feet running to go to the field, I would worry. So that, according to me, is one huge shift in the meaning of discipline. Anyone who would like to share with me on the chat box, what do you think, how do you think 
discipline has kind of changed its meaning. If there is anyone who would like to speak, I would be absolutely thrilled. But I'm not too sure if I can read the chats. I'll help you with that. But as okay, of great. now, we don't have okay. any messages. So, so maybe it's too early. Maybe I'm throwing a question too early in the talk. So let's proceed and then look at. Uh, so just, to, just to answer your question, because nobody else has answered. I feel discipline is all about aligning your mind, body, and soul to what is going on and what is needed to be done at a particular time. This shouldn't have anything to do with noise and sound. Absolutely. Absolutely. Brilliant, Jaya. Discipline is about aligning yourself to what is expected of you. It could be discipline in the kitchen. It could be discipline on the road. It could be discipline with your guests in your drawing room. So discipline is not just a word or a term that is now associated only with schools. It's discipline in the office. It's discipline in the corridor, discipline on the staircase. When your body, mind, and soul is aligned to what is expected out of you, you are a disciplined individual. The training for this discipline happens in schools. Like I say that, you know, uh, girls who borrow things in the classroom end up borrowing lemons from their neighbors because they don't, they are not disciplined in their buying, uh, you know, schedules. Boys who, who end up borrowing in classes are the ones who probably make a mess of their finances because they are not organized. And I'm using boys and girls, but uh, I don't mean any gender bias. Uh, it could be vice versa also. So girls who borrow in school and classes end up not being very well organized and disciplined in their work life also and vice versa. So the stage for inculcating discipline is set in schools. I would not say classrooms, but in schools. And the major, major objective is to make sure, like Jaya said, that we whole entire, our entire being is in alignment with what is expected out of us. Because then this discipline goes beyond our school and classroom life. The next slide, please. Actually, I'm a wanting, I was wanting to have someone else do the slides so that I can have a look at the audience. But uh, Jaya, do you think I should take over the uh, slides myself and then uh, uh, run it? Or do you think this is so, good? So uh, this is going fine. If you want okay. to switch to the other mode, I'm fine with it. I can help you anytime with the chats. I would be very happy this way because at least I get to see somebody. Yes, yes. But, Let's but you this. will have to bear with me when I say next slide. No problem. All right. So uh, Nishita is helping me. So that's great, Nishita. Uh, so discipline, we all know, is a particular code of conduct according to the dictionary. But we have just spoken about a more evolved meaning of the word discipline. Yes, please. When I say yes, please, maybe. From the student's point of view, discipline is often viewed as suppression or imposed control. By and large, whenever you say discipline him, the person who is the object of being disciplined looks at imposed control coming and suppressing his behavior. Yes, next, please. Next, please. You know, in your introduction, when you were talking about the, when there is this recorded message that plays before the session starts, it talks about stakeholders. In, uh, in any child's life, and we are talking about children today, in any child's life, the three major stakeholders are school, the, the peers, when I say students, so the peers and the parents. Yes, please. We are not going to talk about anything except our role. And look at this very beautiful uh, sentence. I will not read it to you. I would want you to read it to yourself in your mind and absorb every word of what it says. And uh, I will change the slide once I have read it at a speed where I think you will be able to absorb. So what is it saying? It's saying that you need your heart, you need to give time, you need a lot of patience, you need a lot of foresight, you need a lot of intuition to protect them. Because come to think of it, an indisciplined environment 
is always, always prone to a lot of risk, whether it's on the play field or whether it's in the classroom. An indisciplined environment is prone to a lot of risk. So your intuition to protect them will automatically get you to put in rules and boundaries, which sometimes are a little unreasonable. By and large, yes, they are in the interest of the children. But sometimes one can get overboard. So, which is why it talks about your intuition to protect them. And yet it talks about your heart and it talks about your patience. And it talks about while you are trying to figure out how to discipline them. So when, it say, when he says, while you're trying to figure out, he clearly means that there is no one size fits all. So if there is an environment which is charged and is a disciplined environment, then the, the, the advantage of positive peer pressure kicks in. You know, we always talk of peer pressure in a negative sense. There's a lot of peer pressure. There's a lot of pressure from the neighbors. There's a lot of pressure from parents. I think a reasonable amount of pressure is actually healthy. And a good peer pressure can be brought in if the entire learning environment is charged to be a disciplined learning environment. Why is it that in Shanti Niketan, everyone is charged to have their creativity at its utmost? Because there is no such thing as negative peer pressure. There is peer pressure. But that peer pressure is to enhance creativity and performance. You know, when I joined the Delhi School of Economics, I was straight out of uh, the IP college, played a lot of hockey, was a good student. I, I was a topper. But I was very, very fond of this one TV program called Chitrahar. There's so much on the television. When I was growing up, there used to be one channel only, Doordarshan. And once a week on Wednesdays at 8.30 sharp, they used to play some songs. And depending on the length of the songs, they used to cover five or six songs from different movies. I was very, very fond of that program. Absolutely. I used to wait for a Wednesday night. And when I joined the Delhi School of Economics, I, uh, in my introduction, when people say, what do you like to do and things like that? I said, oh, I love Chitrahar. Oh my God, the looks I got from people, ye kon aage hai hamare college mein Chitrahar types. We are Delhi School of Economics. We talk intellect. We don't talk Chitrahar. So what I'm trying to tell you is that a learning environment is charged by the kind of ethos that you set in. Which is why I'm talking about discipline as an ethos and not just as an action. It's not that the school is a disciplined school because when somebody is caught smoking, we suspend it. When somebody is caught drinking, we, we, we rusticate it. That's action. Their discipline is an action. I am talking about disciplined environment as an ethos where everyone is charged to be disciplined and there is positive peer pressure. And it's not easy. Raising children uses every bit of your being. Yes, please. As educators, we need a well-planned approach. Yes, next, please. Look at this. This is a little cartoon where it says, Miss Hudson had noticed a sharp decline in misbehavior ever since the rear view mirrors were installed. I'm talking about this as an example of individual approach to discipline. It's, there, is, there can never be a one size fits all. And how do we have that individual approach? Yes, please. What gets us to have that, one, that individual approach to discipline? Yes, next slide, please. You must understand what are the various theories of discipline. And then you must understand what are your own values and educational philosophy. And then make an approach that is in harmony with your own beliefs. This is very important. Understand the theories of discipline. Many a times we feel that we've been into teaching for very long. We don't need to theories. We are very practical. We've got so much of experience. Who cares? But I always insist and urge teachers to read, read and read and read. If there is an issue on regarding anything in your class, in your school, in your teaching, in your anything, read about it. Understand there is so much of research, 
that has gone into anything that you name. So read what people have researched. There would be inferences, there would be conclusions. So read about what are the various theories of discipline, understand what your own values are, and then bring in a harmony. Because you can never, never inculcate discipline contrary to your own fabric. You can never inculcate discipline contrary to your own beliefs. You know, there was, I was once taking a lesson, I, I was once taking a, a tour, uh, I was uh, addressing a group of uh, teachers and we were talking about uh, uh, rapport with the children. And that teacher said, ma'am, hum kya kare? And she named another teacher, say, Khanna sahab. She says, ma'am, hum kya kare? Hum to itni koshish karte hain discipline karne ki. Bacche kehte hain, hum ta ma'am hi sadi hui hai. Khanna sir to humare saath Facebook friend hai. Now, how do you deal with situations like this? The way to deal with them is understand your own values and philosophy. Understand the theory of discipline that matches your philosophy and then bring a harmony with your own beliefs. You know, in, in Wellham Boys School, when I took over, bunking was the norm. Was the norm. Matlab, attendance low, to pada hi chalta tha ke, uh, kids are missing and then they would come back. I was used to uh, taking a lot of rounds in the night. Kabi bara baje, ek baje, I would just go and go to the hostels. In fact, when I joined, the, the, there's a kid called Tushar. He was the editor of the Hindi magazine. And the year I joined, the first issue that came out one month after I joined, he wrote, Hamari adhya, mukhya adhyapika ke top panch. You remember in Hindustan times, we used to get top five of this and top five of that. So he gave a Hindi version and he said, Hamari mukhya adhyapika ke top panch. So one was, of course, God bless, and then two, three, four. And one of them was Raat Ka Musafir. Because I used to take a lot of rounds at night. One night I was out on my round, and it must be around 12, 30. And I was crossing, I was going along the boundary wall, and two children jumped inside. So they, they had bunked, and they just came in. And they landed right there at my feet. They jumped in, little did they know that they landed. <laughs> the principal's feet. I also got a start. They also got a start. I was like speechless. It took me a minute to kind of, you know, come back and say, what's happened? And they also took a minute and then they said, good evening, ma'am. And I said, good evening. And I showed them the watch like this. And I did like this. So they said, ma'am, we were hungry. So I showed them the watch again. Ma'am, we went to the railway station. So, Raat ko saare baare ek baje unko railway station pe ban tikki or whatever they could get. So, uh, they said that. So, I told them, I said, you come home. Now, this is my fabric. I said, you were not going to the hostel, you will first come home. And I took them home. Somebody else may have said, report to the office tomorrow. Somebody else may have said, just get out of my sight and I'll see you tomorrow. Somebody else may have, maybe, I don't know how, but I took them home. And I get, got them to sit down. And I told them, I said, look, bunking can be very, very dangerous. I said, bunking, according to me, is level three offense. Because if you are within the school and you're smoking, it's level one. If you're within the school and you're drinking, is level two. If you're bunking, you could be doing everything. So you're out of the school boundary. And the worst is that you are vulnerable in terms of safety. I said, next time, I didn't get angry with them. I said, next time, and I was just one month in the school. I said, next time you feel hungry, instead of thinking of the railway station, come to my house. Just ring the doorbell and come to my house, I'll serve you food. And one of them, you know how boys are, they can be real devils, they're class 12 kids. One of them looked at me very sheepishly and I was just one month old and a woman. So, you know, they were also checking me out. So one of them looked at me very sheepishly. There were two of them. So one of them looked at me very sheepishly and said, are you serious, ma'am? And I, instead of getting upset at, you know, how dare you talk to your principal like this, I smiled and foolish or, or, uh, or my own fabric. I said, check me out. Can you imagine a principal talking to two boys of grade 12 who bunked and landed at her feet at 12.30 in the night? Talking to her, talking to them and saying, check me out. They said, sure, ma'am. Good night, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. And they went away. And I was asking myself, I have I done the right thing? Have I not done the right thing? Sure enough, sure enough, 
the very next day believe me without exaggeration the very next day 2:30 in the night my doorbell rang and i said what's this i got up with a start and i came down and there were seven of them man they are hungry i said come right in and my cook used to stay on the campus i called him raat ko 2:30 baje the principal and the cook were making parathas for the children okay that's my fabric it may not it may not be making sense to many of you but i'll talk about it a little later when i talk about punishments and consequences some of you may think that this is being too liberal and i think that is the challenge in disciplining the child how far and no further where do you draw the line that is the trick so um, maybe have an the next slide please so what i do is i relate theories of discipline to theories of parenting because i've been a thoroughbred boarding school principal plus as a teacher that's what we are doing in the classes also so i relate my theories of discipline to theories of parenting all the styles of parenting and we all know that there are four major styles of parenting one says obey very very authoritarian absolutely because i you know my nephew he was he was sitting at the table he was all of maybe 20 years old and my sister in law is telling him take sit down here and he's saying but why she's saying because i am saying so and that kid just sat down there and he's looking at me and saying bua why am i sitting here this is authoritative authoritarian very very because i am saying so right next please this is permissive these parents these teachers allow everything they set no boundaries they want to be populist teachers they are populist parents you know shiv khera in his book you can win says that we belong to the no generation if i told my dad that i want to go and have a sleep over at night he would say no sweetheart and his no meant no today if a child goes to the dad and says i want to sleep over the dad will say ha kitne baje driver ko bulaun and agar galti se parent ne bol diya no patak will come the answer why why not so these are parents who are very permissive i am not saying there is a there is uh, there is uh, i'm not saying that uh, uh, we should not allow children to go for a sleep over i'm not getting to that what i'm trying to put across is permissive parents are scared to say a no to the children permissive teachers are scared to say a no to the children we know teachers who enter the classroom and do their own teaching and come out they couldn't care less about what's happening at the in the last seat of the classroom permissive teachers yes please uninvolved uninvolved teachers and parents again something very very serious and then finally yes please my favorite authoritative where there are boundaries you can see there are boundaries but it's very very authoritative very firm there is there is firmness and there is responsiveness there is warmth and there is connect i in one of my slides later on i will refer to this picture just capture it in the eye of your mind i will come back to this picture little later so depending on what kind of parenting you would like to engage in will decide what kind of discipline you would like to engage in we all know the 3d model of prevention action and resolution we all know that so if your parenting if your teaching style is not permissive to uh, to the extreme all parenting styles are good but it's only extremities that makes them bad so it's nice to be permissive you must allow children but extreme permissiveness then uh, lands up all of us in trouble similarly it's good to be authorita authoritative you know there is there is one um, i had heard i've heard of one principal of the bishop cotton school 
years ago, must be what, 40 years ago, maybe. At that time, caning was permitted. Today, corporal punishment is a complete no. Is a complete, complete no. It's banned in countries and otherwise also it has no merit. We'll talk about that also later. But when I'm talking about authoritarian and authoritative, so this principle of uh, Bishop Cotton, was it? Uh, yeah, one of those uh, schools in Shimla. He was very tough on the children. He used to cane them. I, I'm At the cost of repetition, let me tell you, I'm not in favor of corporal punishment at all. I'm just quoting his example to uh, convey another point. But so people, the kids used to, you know, get very upset when he would cane them because he was very, very tough on them. But, you know, when he died, when he died, the DC of that place had to put a curfew because it was impossible to control crowds on the roads. He had to put a curfew for that one hour when his body was being taken for the funeral. Flights were full. So people had to fly. He, 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 he retired and then spent the rest of his life in a town in Punjab. People could not get Delhi Amritsar flights. They flew Delhi Chennai Chennai Amritsar to pay tribute to that teacher. What I'm trying to put across to you is no style is good or bad. It just has to be accompanied with a lot of love and it doesn't have to be extreme. And if it is already a lot of love, then it has to be accompanied with a lot of firmness. So these children, like I said, 2.30 they came and I gave them food. You know how children are. One day I actually had a kid come to my house at about 7.40. Ma'am, I'm hungry. I said, then go to the dining hall. It's 7.40. It's dinner time. No, ma'am, today it's curry. And I I looked at him and I said, just go. You're, this is not a restaurant parallel to the school dining hall. Whether it's curry or whether it's bengan, you please go. He said, ma'am, now by the time I go, food will be over. I'll stay hungry. I said, that's a choice that you made. You made a wrong choice. You please go right away. He ran to the dining hall. I, of course, checked with the cook to make sure that he's reached and he gets his curry chawal at least. But then... With all that love that I showered on them, I knew where to be firm. And I think that is the trick. If you're showering them with a lot of love, make sure you don't take it to the extreme without being firm. And if you're firm with them, make sure that there are streaks, lots of streaks of lots of love for them so that it is effective. Your, your efforts for disciplining them is effective. So uh, prevention, action, and resolution is a 3D model of discipline. Yes, please. Next. This definitely is not prevention. This again is weak, weak parenting, weak caregiving, weak. I'm just showing this to you to drive home the point that whatever theory of discipline you may believe in, you have to come from a position of strength. And that position of strength will come only and only if you come from a position of being right and from a lot of love. Yes, please. Next, please. Next, please. Reasons for indiscipline. Next, please. Look at this. How can I possibly a discipline problem? I'm usually asleep. The one reason of indiscipline is that the child doesn't even know, doesn't even understand that this is indiscipline. Right? You know, in Punjab, now that I've started DPS Rajpura, uh, when, I was, when I was at Wellam or at VDJS or DPS Jalandhar, if parents were working, they would come and say, the mother and father would be very apologetic and say, you know, ma'am, actually, we are very busy. Our jobs are very demanding. We really can't give time to our child. There was a sense of apology. There was a sense of guilt. Punjab ke to hausle itne buland hai na. Their confidence levels... I mean, they're working and they come and they sit like this. Ma'am, we are working. We don't have time for the child. Now, they're, they're not even aware. So here I'm saying this kid is not even aware. He's saying I'm sleeping. So how can I be a problem? How can I be indisciplined? Next slide, please. 
this child comes from a background where he doesn't know that using foul language is indiscipline. He says, my dad used the exact same words yesterday. Does he also have to come to your office here? So we need to understand what is the cause of discipline. First, we need to understand the cause. Find out, like those kids who bunked and landed at my feet. I asked them, why did you bunk? My start point was there. Find out the cause. Yes, please. Next. Another problem. And this we are facing. You look at, I don't know if you can read, 1969, if a child did badly, the parents would be looking at the child and saying, explain these bad grades. And look at the child. He's getting a shouting, explain. Today, the bad grades are thrown at the teacher and the child is smiling and you're asking the teacher, explain the bad grades. Now, if, if parents behave like this and ask teachers to explain bad grades in the presence of the child, there's a problem. And we all face this problem. We all face this problem today, which is why handling discipline and indiscipline has become a greater challenge today than it ever was. Next, please. We have to believe in the traffic police discipline or the traffic light discipline. Next, please. That's the choice that we have to make. And I don't think there really is a choice. It's a traffic light discipline. Gandhiji also talked about self-discipline, self-control, self-regulation. Yes, please. Next. That is the key. Self-discipline is the expression of inner strength and staying power. Inner strength. Because when we discipline the child and the child is able to build inner strength, then there is staying power and that inner strength stays with him all his life. Then they will not be able, to, they will not grow up to be an embarrassment. You know, there, is, there was one boy who was very violent, very aggressive. Very, very aggressive. I've shared this story with a lot of people. Very aggressive. And uh, we tried everything, but somehow he would just lose control. One day at the breakfast table, you know, he was just about to pass out of school. This is one of my favorite stories. He was about to pass out of school. So I told him, I said, I took his name, whatever his name was. I'm not saying using the same name, but okay, for the sake of, uh, 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 for the sake of convenience, Rahul. So I said, Rahul, you'll be passing out of school in one month, Bete. I just have to tell you, make sure you say a bye to me before you go because my path will never cross yours and don't even invite me for your wedding. So he says, why, ma'am? I said, Bache, tum ladka ho, to barat jati hai, ladki ko lene ke liye, aur barat kya hoti hai? Barat means ke hum is ladke ke saath aaye hain, aapki beti ko lene ke liye. Hum is ladke ke saath khade hain. Aapki beti ka dhyan rakhne ke liye. I said, Main to tumhari barat mein khadai nahi ho sakti. Main tumhare saath jaungi, woh ladki ko leke rahenge, tum usko maro ge. To woh mere paas aage ke, ma'am, aap to barat mein aaye te, hamari bitiya ko woh maarta hai, to main kya bolungi? I said, I will not attend your wedding. It hit him very hard. It hit him very, very hard. And he came to me much later and said, ma'am, I have really improved myself. Will you come for my marriage? I am talking about inner strength. How it works, you have to figure out. And then if there is inner strength, there is staying power. And that is what is true discipline. Next, please. Where the locus of control is with them and not with us. Remember in the first slide I said, Children feel suppressed. Children feel there is imposed control. Let's shift. That is the changing meaning of definition. Let's shift from imposed control to the locus of control with the children so that they develop that inner strength and they develop that staying power. Next, please. Self-discipline is a form of freedom. This I will not explain because this in itself is a half an hour topic. I just want you to absorb this sentence and think about it. How can self-discipline be a form of freedom? Okay, think about it as teachers. Yes, next please. Punishment versus consequence.
punishment actually is a word that is in the Indian penal code. Punishment is a word which talks about a penalty that is imposed for retribution. Retribution means give and take. So you do something wrong, you are given a punishment. That's retribution. Retribution can also be positive, but in, in general parlance, punishment and retribution are kind of interchangeable. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. This is all retribution. This is all punishment. What is consequence? Consequence means every action, every choice, every decision that you take has an effect, has an impact. For me, disciplining is about consequences and not about punishments. Yes, next please. Basic guidelines that have worked for me. Next. Next please. RSVP approach. The punishment is completely out of the window. The consequence must be reasonable, must be simple, must be valuable, and must be practical. I would add to the R's and say, not just reasonable, it must also be relevant. So suppose a child, you know, it's very often we, we find a child who's not done his homework and we say, you've not done your homework, you will not go for games now. It's neither reasonable nor relevant have to connect the two even if you tell him that you don't have to go for games it doesn't have to come like that that your games period is cancelled you still may not want to send him for games but the way to put it is you have not completed your work in the class I want it I expected it to be at my table please finish it only when you finish it will you be able to go for your games instead of saying your games period is cancelled it may sound the same, but it is not the same. It is definitely not the same. Valuable as a learning tool. If I tell you just now to write your name 100 times, your own name, something that you're very proud of. I am Gunmeet Bindra. I am Gunmeet Bindra. I am Gunmeet Bindra. And I'd say, write it 100 times. Somewhere down the line, you will lose. So, what is the value of a, pun a consequence which is not a learning tool? It has to be a learning tool. It has to be simple. It has to be practical. Next, please. Discipline with dignity. Never, ever, ever play with the self-esteem of the child. Never. That, I think, is one of the biggest mistakes we can do. You know, there is one girl who, who never answers in the class. Never, never used to answer in the class. One day she actually woke up in the morning to say that I am going to now behave myself and become a better child. And in the class she answered. And suppose her name is uh, uh, Soumya. And Soumya answers in the class. She's a very indisciplined child, but that day she answers in the class and the teacher says, we played with the dignity of the child. Do you think she will ever, ever want to answer in your class again? No. Never play with the dignity of the child. Yes, please. Never humiliate. It's the same thing. Never get into a power struggle with the children. Never. You know, I had one boy... Who, 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 would, who would openly insult the teacher in front of everyone and then go and apologize to him in person. So he made his impact in front of everyone and then he would go and apologize to the teacher in person. The teacher would accept the apology, but next time he would see that boy with all his friends, he would again humiliate him in front of everyone so it never ended it just never ended we cannot afford to get into a power struggle with the children not with anyone least of all with the children next please yeah this is this is just someone who's being very difficult and intimidating and says no and that should cover all my rules for the class next please 
teachers might sometimes be the biggest bullies yes of course make direct eye contact use the proxim power of proximity you know recently there's one child class one uh, six year old six year old kid stole the skate of another child and took it home the mother labeled the skate with the name of this child okay so let's say i'm just picking up the name of the three uh, excuse, excuse me ma'am there is some disturbance with uh, the microphone somewhere with you I Maybe think I am the way I was better. I'm, I mean, I'm just the way I was. There is some disturbance now. We just recently started. Okay. So how do you uh, I uh, think advise me to handle this? It's bit better now. It's better. Okay. It's good. So I think it's just come and gone on its own. So I was talking to you about this kid um, uh, who stole uh, the skates and the mother uh wrote the name of the child and a six-year-old child we are talking about wrote the name of the child on the skates and we had already invited the list of children who want to take up skating as a hobby his name was not there three days later the mother sends in a message to the class teacher saying please add my child's name in the list of uh, skaters now uh we knew we knew that this is this these skates belong to someone else we uh, the teacher called up the parent and said that you know uh, uh, the, the child uh, we, uh, did not opt for skates three days back how come now so she said nahi pehle usko interest nahi tha ab usko interest aa gaya and very very difficult parent i called the child to my class and believe me he came holding his water bottle like this and he was nervous six year old so i told him i said better keep your water bottle on one side and let's talk and i took his hands in my hands and i looked at his face and i said my god you've got such lovely eyes and my god i just praised him and made him comfortable and i said you want to do skating you mama to sent us a message you want to do skating he said yes ma'am and i said i said fir aap apne skates kyun nahi kharide bete aapne uske kyun le liye jane ke skates kyun leke gaye aapne apne skates kyun nahi kharide he said maine mama ko yahi bola mama ne bola koi baat nahi abhi ye chala lo fir wo khareed denge it was so simple to get the child to speak because i used the power of proximity it works not just for 6 year old it works for the senior children also get them to sit in front of you look at them in the eye with all your love because you if 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 a child a grown up kid is making a mistake he needs your compassion first he has a right to be heard he has a right to be understood and then if he doesn't then you have a right to deal with it your way but the beginning has to be on a compassionate ground be firm be anger free and be consistent can't change rules and can't make it different for different people yes next please concept of fair and not equal you know once a kid had written the four letter word with a compass on a teacher's bonnet now when we found that letter written on the teacher's bonnet when the teacher came to me and said ma'am these boys have written i said which boys they got the boys there were about seven of them and i asked them individually who planned it who wrote it who got the compass who was the guard and i gave them punishments at the different levels because i believe in the concept of being fair and not equal the little junior kid was asked to guard so that no one comes and sees them now you can't punish that junior kid the same way as you would punish the boy who actually masterminded and wrote that four letter word on the bonnet so the concept of consequence has to be fair and not equal and it must make sense and it must be a model of what we expect from the children next please there has to be absolute no absolute yes and absolute clarity now the concept when i say there has to be it has to be simple it has to be practical 
you know in the west there have this system of social service so even even if you get a ticket for driving they give you some hours of social service to do which is good which is great but we may must understand that when we are assigning a consequence we must make sure that the children understand what we are talking about i once went to a gurdwara Uh, it was a gurdwara in jalandhar and i was the founder principal of one of the schools there when i went to the gurdwara one of my students who saw me then he had grown 4 years older than he was in grade 6 that time when i went 4 years later he was in grade 10 wo pocha laga raha tha gurdwara mein so i said hey he recognized me i recognized him good uh, good evening ma'am i said good evening i said what are you doing here you know as a natural question what are you doing here Ma'am, I'm being punished because I bunked my class. So, Gurdwara me pocha lagane ke liye uski teacher ne bola, which is a good thing. You're connecting him instead of asking him to write, I will not bunk my class. Instead of making him stand outside the class, instead of suspending him, usko Gurdwara me pocha lagwaya. But the spirit of the consequence was missing. So there has to be absolute clarity. about what you are giving and what you are expecting yes next please next please stop doing ineffective things we'll just move on because we are running short of time next please so the key word is connectedness if there is one word that you want to take away from here about disciplining your child the word is connectedness this is my favorite word i use it in many presentations because somehow this word fits in with any topic it's a it's a it's a magic word so if there is connectedness between you and your children discipline will never be a problem yes next please i want to play this little video here It's just two minutes ten seconds. Hello, Intercor. Hi, is that the demolition place? It is, yeah. Could you help me to destroy my school, please? Just bear with me a second. Hello. Hi. Oh, but where? What school do you go to? I go to a school in Dublin. And you want it demolished? Yeah. <laughs> Do you use a big racking ball or we how have, do you knock it down? A big ra- a big ball. Well, we right. <laughs> well, hold on one wee second, please. Hello. How are you? My name's Becky. Yes. I have a proposal for you. Go ahead. Are you the demolition man? Yes. You're the top boss, yeah? Go ahead. What's the crack? Hello. I want you to. To help me destroy my school. You want to blow it up? Could you blow it up or knock it down? Whatever, whatever, whatever you want done. I'll blow it up. That would be better. Can you make sure that all my teachers are in there when you knock it down? I don't know if I can get away with that now. I will. Nobody likes them. <laughs> They give me extra homework on a Friday and everything. <laughs> where are you calling from? From Dublin. Where? What? Where? What school in Dublin? The one that's about to fall down. There's, there's a lot of schools in Dublin about to fall down. And how much would it cost to knock it to the ground? It depends how big it is. Give me a ballpark finger. Finger. <laughs> okay, I think that's about all we can stop this here. <laughs> we can stop this video here. So, what am I trying to convey in this video? Just a little extra homework on a Friday. and look at the bitterness in the child she wants the school knocked down with all the teachers in it so the thing is the mantra is that discipline should not get our children to say the teacher is mean the discipline consequences should get the children to say i made a mistake i am sorry i made a mistake and if we can accomplish that good luck and lots of happiness to all of us with that i think i close my address thank you very much it's 423 i don't know how much time you have another 3 4 minutes maybe for any questions i would be happy to take
Otherwise, thank you once again, everybody. God bless us all. Ma'am, I have been at the edge of my chair <laughs> throughout the talk, as it always happens whenever I listen to you. There have been various situations that you have presented before us and how a different way of handling can actually lead to corruption rather than getting into bitterness, which usually arises out of disciplining uh, approaches. So friends, if you have any questions, any thoughts to share, please feel free. You can unmute. Miss Maya, you have unmuted yourself, I feel, by mistake. There was uh, a hand raised, Mr. Manohar. If you have a thought to share, Mr. Manohar, please unmute yourself. Uh, hi, Jaya. This is Abhishek here. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Hello, how yes. are you guys? Good evening. Yes, go on, please. Ma'am, so I have my entire team. I have a group of my teachers with me. And could you please shed some light on how we could work with masses where we have about 40 children in school and yet be critical without criticism, like we discussed earlier? So the and some examples of uh, real life connections to you when you've done it in the past. Yeah, so trick manoeuvre, see 40 <laughs> children to a class or 20 children to a class really does not matter. There is research which says that the size of the class does not impact learning, right? There is a research which says that the size of the class does not ma impact discipline. If you are an effective teacher, you can, you can take charge of classroom management with 40 children. If the teacher is ineffective, then 20 is a handful. The way to do it, Manohar, the way I dealt with it in the past is to have very clear set of rules and consequences. We actually sat down over weeks and drafted a manual and asked the children to say, what is, you remember I was mentioning level one offense, level two offense. We asked the children that if this is if this is what the child does, what level would it give? So if there are boys who answer back, it's level one. If they answer back twice, is this level, third level, fourth level. Intimidating. You know, sometimes the children can be intimidated. One boy told a, a master, a housemaster, when the housemaster threatened him literally and said, you better behave yourself, otherwise you know what, what's coming your way. And the kid turns back and says, sir, you can't say anything to me. You don't know who I am. You in Hindi movies, mein hai na? father college chalata hai, ya father politician hota hai. Sir, you can't say anything to me. You don't know who I am. Now that, what level of offense? Simple. What I would recommend, what has worked with me is a very clear set of rules and consequences and then administer them because they'll be fair, they'll be consistent, they'll be reasonable and they'll be clear. That's the way, I mean, that's the way I would do. Ma'am, and also with a new teacher, uh, freshers who joined the school, it so happens that they do not have the line between, you know, like you said, love and being, uh, drawing the line and showing love. So when teachers have shown too much of love, it becomes difficult for the children to uncondition themselves to go back to, to a stricter teacher. Now, how could a teacher work to getting back to those strict lines and drawing lines after being showing a lot of love for a long time. Manohar, uh, you know, the, the trick, uh, what according to me works, the trick is to let them know that you are very giving, but you don't take nonsense. You know, the day, my first day, Manohar, my first day at Wellam Boys, the school had gone into vacation. So I joined on the, as a principal designate on the 20, uh, 20th of November. 28th of November was the annual day. And then post the annual day, the school goes on vacation and all kids go back. But grade 12 and 10 stay back for their extra classes. So everybody went back on the 28th, 29th morning. I called all the class 12 kids. My first interaction with them as a principal in chair. For the last one week, they had seen me as principal designate. For the first time, they saw me as a principal in chair. Believe me, Manohar, they were like, good morning, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. And I said, oh my God. I said, now if I check them, I've, I've broken my rapport with them. And if I don't correct them, I've told them this is acceptable. There was a very, very thin line for me to handle. And they were also checking me out, Manor, like you say, with a new teacher. They want to check you out. They check you out. You have to make sure that you are firm there is a difference between loving them and being permissive. You understand the difference? 
authoritative parents are very loving they are very warm and responsive but they know how much to permit so i actually listen to them i ask them how much course has been completed and they actually chewing the gum and you know flushing their hair like this every 2 minutes and hands in their pockets i mean say it and it was there in their body language i listen to them discuss the syllabus and then just before dispersing i said okay but before we disperse i have just one uh, one thought to share with you i said you know the way you've been behaving hands in the pocket chewing gum doing all of this and i acted like them i did like this in front of them i said i don't know what you're trying to prove but i know you're wellamites this is not the way you behave with people you are very dignified boys this is not wellam i know you're just trying to check me out you just want to have some fun with me so i'm also letting it go but you and i know that this is not our behavior and you and i know that i will not accept this next time today it's fine it's day one have fun and anyone has a chocolate maybe i can have one but only today sunday nani ko i said that i i remember i joined dps rk puram as a teacher and at that time dps rk puram was already in front of top mein kaise ho raha hai aunty ki the line pe kar kya kar rahe ho ah ms deepti deepti please put yourself on uh, mute so manohar sorry, sorry ma'am sorry dps rk puram at that time i'm talking about 1999 they would divide the class into three sections and believe me i'm not exaggerating they were called ability semi ability and non ability ability with all the toppers semi ability were the average and non ability if you please and guess who was in the non ability section god bless pranab mukherji his grandson so the likes of him were in the non ability very some of them very spoiled and when i was handed over my time table i'm answering your question to a new teacher when i was handed over my time table god bless the soul my hod gave me the time table and said mrs bindra this is your time table we've given you 11th non ability to check your classroom control we've given you 12th ability to check your subject knowledge and we've given you 11th semi ability as a filler as a teacher we are expected to be just everywhere and when i went into the non ability section there were eggs eggs on the floor and when i walked in one of the boys said ma'am have you heard the latest i said yeah man nitin has started laying eggs now how do you respond to that in the class and i looked at all of them and i said i said okay i can understand he started laying eggs but i want to know who's been hatching them here it it was like you know i i showed to them that i'm not unnerved you can talk about anything and then i told them to sit down and i said bacche been there done that i've been teaching since you were not even born it's nice to have some fun but let this be the last time i see this kind of behavior in the class otherwise you'll find yourself somewhere else so i i think it's just a matter of like i said understand your own values understand how much margin you want to give don't worry about how others are treating them set the rules for your own domain your own space get them to understand how much you love them and get them to understand that you are a no nonsense person that's it I hope that answers you. Thanks, ma'am. Thank Good evening, ma'am. This is Kuntal. Ah, Kuntal, you've been my colleague. Good evening, ma'am. This is Kuntal Majumdar. Yes, yes, you've been my colleague, Kuntal. We met together. <laughs> A long time, yes. ma'am. God bless you. Yeah, ma'am, you have been my inspiration in Ireland all throughout. <laughs> Thank you, you. ma'am. I would like to put in a question. Yeah, of course. Yes. Marketing between being friendly and being a friend, isn't it? I suppose yes. after spending some time into this profession, I see that the the teachers who are coming off late into this profession, they mostly they forget this line of demarcation and they realize that's where the indiscipline cases starts because we give them too much of leverage to the student and then we cannot tackle those. And at the same time, many a times I feel that. Some are teacher by choice. Some are teacher by chance. That also makes a difference. Ma'am, you have to take on this. So let me take the last one first. Choice teachers by choice, teachers by chance. I'm a teacher by chance, not by choice. Kuntal, when I went to Delhi School of Economics, I told my colleagues, my friends, I told them, "Don't study in any school. You'll be surprised." I'm a teacher by chance. 
But once we've chosen the profession, we give a hundred percent to it, which is what I'm doing. As far as other teachers are concerned, they don't know where to draw the line. They don't know how to be friends or friendly. Could the children know who to take for granted, whom not to? When the invigilation chart is out, have just stand behind the children when they're seeing. Acha Kuntal sir, I am se cheating hoyegi, phara raklo. Manohar sir, nahi ya, dekhlo. Manohar sir ki hai invigilation hai. The same child will behave differently in one class as compared to another. So, True. like Gandhi ji says, na apne apne charke me tel dalo. You look after your own domain, your own space, and make an impact. I promise you, whatever else is happening everywhere else, your space, your domain. And I'm not saying restrict yourself, but make sure that there is no compromise on your domain. If you're a class teacher, your class. If you're head of the department, your department. If you're head of the wing, primary, middle school, then your wing. Make sure that the your domain is taken care of with your very clear uh, uh, philosophy and understanding of how to administer discipline. And then if it is beyond your domain and it is disturbing you, you always have uh, higher ups to go to. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, yeah, sure, ma'am. They say a school is a place where the principal is scared of the board. The board is scared of the parents. The parents are scared of children, and children are scared of nobody. <laughs> <laughs> and hence, the, yes, ma'am. And hence the changing definition of discipline. And hence the changing definition of discipline. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. These were actually the questions were were very invigorating. I'm sure you have brought out everyone else back into the discussion who was who were looking at the watch probably wonderful questions and excellent examples by ma'am with uh, with the logic why it will work and how it works so friends if there are any more questions you may quickly just ask within 30 seconds one last question namaste ma'am yes kushpendra namaste uh, namaste ma'am so firstly, uh, although, you know, I learned a lot of uh, things from your uh, experience. However, one thing I must say is that although you seem like a very, uh, you know, someone who has like very strong command over uh, your class and your school as well, uh, I, I do see there is a very loving heart within you, which I can sense from the way you talk about these experiences, because nowhere I found that you hold anything against any of your experiences. You still have like a fond memories and you share it with a, with a lesson. Which, which is the takeaway from me, uh, for me. So thank you so much, ma'am. I really loved what you said, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you Pushpender. So uh, I, I'm very glad that you could sense it. Yes, I have a very loving heart, but I'm a no-nonsense person. I have, I mean, I shouldn't be making a, a public uh, uh, confession, but I've dealt with boys with a very, very firm hand absolute no nonsense i remember there was a case where one parent came to me and said madam aap is bacche ko maine kisi ko resticate kiya tha 12th standard mein to wo parent aa gaya aur mujhe bola ke ma'am aap isko wapas le lo nahi to media trial kar lenge i said bilkul karo media trial itna media trial karo main har media trial mein is bacche ka naam lungi to jaise nirbhaya ka case hua tha na sare hindustan ko naam yaad aa gaya मैं इस बच्चे का इतना नाम लूंगी कि ये लड़की देखने जाएगा तो बोलेंगे ये वो लड़का तो नहीं है नौकरी ढूंढने जाएगा तो बोलेंगे ये वो लड़का तो नहीं है मैंने कहा मीडिया ट्रायल की धमकी मुझे मत दो मैं यहाँ नहीं तो ट्यूशन पढ़ा के अपना कल रोटी चला लूंगी बट द चाइल्ड हैज टू बी रेस्ट एंड आई डोंट रेस्टिकेट चिल्ड्रन वेरी इजिली इन आई थिंक इन माई थर्टी फाइव ईयर्स ऑफ माई करियर आई मस्ट है मे बी फोर और फाइव चिल्ड्रन जब बिल्कुल हद हो जाती है एंड उसमें भी आफ्टर रेस्टिकेटिंग आई फेसिलिटेट देर एडमिशन इन एन अदर स्कूल you know what i'm saying well, i know yes, ma'am that so when they say <laughs> sometimes, sometimes for discipline you have to remove because the child if he's removed from that situation is good for the child also rest i say ki kiran bedi tihar jail mein reforms ki baat karti hai hum to school chala rahe hain yes ma'am i remember one of your students yes. came to our school later on <laughs> you remember that? And then <laughs> yes, ma'am, I remember. Said, 
I said, uh, a man, I... Nikhil, discipline, but apne saath le lo. He's a good boy. Change of environment will help him. Uh, I yes. remember, ma'am. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. I think everything comes down to connectedness, like ma'am yeah. said. If we could take one thing from here, the children do not question your being strict, your being firm, your extreme measures at times. If they know what you are doing is out of love, out of concern, out of compassion, you want their good at the end of the day. And children are very good at sensing it, and they also can sense your fake love. So do not try to fake. So first is developing, nurturing this. life skill of compassion and it's a skill it can be developed it can be acquired so as teachers let us first develop compassion be compassionate love yourself self love and then it, you can bring it out to your children and i'm sure once that love you have in your heart it reflects the teachers who have the firmest hands they deal with the firmest hands also have the softest hearts if what they are doing is emerging out of concern and care for children and children can can recognize it the so, ma'am to some extent i could relate to all the examples you have given out of my 20 years more than 10 years i have served in residential schools and i am not very proud to say but yes initially i have hit a lot of children and they are the children who are the closest to my heart and i am closest to them even after two decades being in this profession again i am not a supporter of corporal punishment but let me tell you that was that probably corporal is when you are taking an action you are using your physical force with some kind of resentment a dislike for child no respect for the child self esteem i think that's how it has to be defined still we should try without any physical power of physical force we should be able to bring a change in the child use those methods and approaches because times have changed children are not the same they don't have that kind of environment in the family and home which we used to have earlier two dec- decades back so today change with the changing times bring that connectedness with your children what i liked a few more other things from ma'am's uh, sessions where i would probably like to clarify you need to spend some time invest time in making rules with your students that time is going to pay off for a very 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 long time later in maintaining discipline in the class don't that just do it as a formality writing some class rules displaying it but please do the process invest time in it one thing which probably might uh, make you realize why children behave in a certain manner which like ma'am said do not get unnerved if you are unnerved their purpose is solved and that's when the inner strength of a teacher also comes into action realize ultimately they are children they are acting in a childish way they are testing you at times but let us have our our self respect above all this so that we can understand they are just being childish don't be taken away uh, for a ride uh, with this behavior so this is something we can definitely control if you are conscious of that another one last point may not be directly connected to what ma'am was explaining but connected to one one uh, clip the comic strip which was shown so when the times have changed and the parents questioning the teacher about explain the bad grades i think here a lot of responsibility is on the school leaders there are many school leaders in our attendees i can say this with confidence that my school parent probably would think 100 times before doing it because i do not appreciate such a behavior i would never ever allow a parent to do it if i come to know my teachers would know that i am there in their defense whatever happens nobody has a right to question the teacher disrespect the teacher humiliate the teacher and that is where we all together as a fraternity have to understand we can change we can change the scenario absolutely jaya i just want i just want to give one closing remark to say that like you said uh, it's everybody's responsibility and as school leaders if we protect our teachers and give them the power they have to in turn reciprocate with the with living up to the faith that we as leaders you know repose in them despite all rules despite all efforts despite everything children are children they will still challenge us they will still fail us sometimes but at the end of it i have only one sentence to say all of it is worth it correct ma'am and we have to take your word for it as you have spent 36 years in it so 
I'm sure we will all feel the same by the end of our career where we can feel it was all worth it. Absolutely. We are in the best of the profession. Thank you so much, ma'am. Words Thank would you. fail to express my gratitude and my love for you. Thank like you. Pushpendra sir spoke about the blend. She really is a blend of both the things. And ma'am, I've given you a, a nickname. Huh. Do you remember that? <laughs> yes. Tell me. You sent me a WhatsApp with that nickname. <laughs> what? <laughs> you sent me a WhatsApp when you sent me a reminder for today's date. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, ma'am, I have been calling her the Sherni. She's the Sherni. Uh, but who knows how to nurture? She's a nurturing Sherni. No fear. Thank you. And ma'am, you are an, Id an ideal for me. I look up to you and I want you to know that. We all are very thankful. Thank you. I look forward to meeting you guys in person sometime. And thank you to everyone who put up questions. Make, made me feel very uh, nice. You know, it, it's like a teacher in the class. Thank you, Manohar. Thank you, Pushpendra. Thank you, Kuntal. Thank you, all of y'all for engaging in the conversation. And thank you once again. God bless you, Jaya. And God bless everyone directly or indirectly associated with your efforts. God bless. Thank you, ma'am. Love you so much. Take care of yourself. Keep Thank guiding. You. Thank you. God bless us all. Thank you, you ma'am. Hope to host you soon physically in my school. Pleasure. Looking forward. God bless. Thanks, everyone. See you next Monday at the 